Gaethje. It's the Ryzen champ against the Bellator champ. It's the former Bellator champ against the current Bellator champ. It's one of several great 135-pound bouts in both boxing and MMA this weekend. It's Sergio Pettis, and he's joining us now from Connecticut. Hey, Sergio, how are you? Doing good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Great to talk to you. So uh, let me ask you, Sergio Pettis versus Kyoji Haraguchi, Saturday night, Rob Font versus Jose Aldo. Which is the better 135-pound bout, my man? <laughs> I mean, both of them are going to be great, honestly, man. I Come think, on. Uh, Don't sit both, on the fence. I mean, both of them. Both <laughs> of them. I'm going to be honest, man. I'm a fan of both uh, UFC and Bellator, but... Uh, you know, I, obviously, I'm going to go out there and do, do the best me. And uh, I know Horiguchi's going to bring that heat. So we're going to put on a good uh, show uh, come this Friday. When you won the belt against uh, Juan Archuleta just a few months ago, in your mind, did the first title defense have to be against this man, Kyoji Horiguchi, because he was the champ and had to vacate the title because of the knee injury? Like, did you feel like you almost had to beat this guy to really consider yourself champion? Oh, for sure, man. Um, I mean, obviously, I think it's a fight that makes the most sense, too. You know, he's coming from Risen, champ from Risen, uh, last Belter champion that uh, didn't lose the belt. He had to vacate it due to a knee injury. So I think this fight made the most sense in 29-3, uh, and three, and uh, being as long as he's been in the sport, I think he deserves it. Now, why isn't his belt on the line? Um, cause it's a Bellator fight, man. Yeah. We're not in, we're not in a, uh, a boxing K or a boxing ring fighting. So, uh, yeah, my belt's on the line and I think this really, uh, is a good motivator for me though. It signifies who the real champion is of this division at 135. Uh, has there been any talks? Like if you win, do you get to fight him over there and fight for his belt? No talks on that yet. I, I, I hope that's a possibility though. Uh, you know, two belts, uh, for me would be awesome. Anthony's got a belt in the UFC and the WC. So if we could get Bellator and, uh, Risen Bell, we'd have uh, a lot of belts for the Pettis household name. Um, I was watching the uh, the Bellator countdown uh, little show that they put together. It's like a 50-minute thing on YouTube. I thought they did a great job, and the most interesting part of it was just kind of seeing your maturation and evolution as a person. Of course, we met you so long ago when you were you know, just Anthony's younger brother. You were so young when we first learned about you. And one of the things that you said in that, which really stuck with me, was for a very long time, you didn't even believe that you were a fighter, that you could be a great fighter. What was that like? Like you you have this very famous older brother, but internally, and you're fighting in the UFC, and internally, you're not even quite sure if you belong? Yeah, for sure, man. You know, I, I grew up uh, not too confident. Uh, I was uh, a lot different than Anthony. Anthony grew up, he had this like, uh, just natural confidence and uh, just believed in himself at a young age. For me, um, I had to kind of build into that. You know, I didn't even think, like, like you said, I didn't think I was a fighter at the end of the day. And, uh, and I think I realized I'm a martial artist. You know, I'm a, I'm a martial artist grown into a fighter. And uh, I've grown into a different individual throughout the, the martial arts journey. So, um, man, it's been, it's been it's crazy, man. It's been a crazy route for me. And uh, just to overcome all the stuff that I had to overcome personally and internally, um, I feel like a whole different individual. I feel a lot better and more confident in myself. And I feel like this Friday is going to be the first step of really showing who Sergio Pettis is. What was the turning point for you? How did you start to believe that you belonged here, that you were a fighter, that you were, you know, worthy of all of this? Uh, I think just that everyday grind, man, I, I wouldn't give up, you know, even though I had these negative thoughts and this, uh, this bad perspective of myself at a young age, the more I kept going to the gym, the more I kept showing up and getting some uh, successful wins over big names, I started realizing, yo, maybe, maybe I'm good at this. And maybe uh, this is a sport for me and uh, the route that I want to take. And uh, I think around, honestly, when I, when I got my first two back-to-back -back losses, I really started to see my true love for the sport. I lost to Husier Formiga. Then I lost to Rob Font, like, right after that. And I had some dark times of questioning everything, man. I was questioning, you know, like, everything, you know, like, the, the, my career, my, my life, all of that. And then um, the only thing that made me feel better was showing up and going to the gym. And I realized, you know, this is, this is it for me. This is what I want to do, and this is everything that I need has been in front of me this whole time. And now it's just... Uh, and it's been, it's been a great journey, man. Like it's, it's been awesome to, to see all that. That is somewhat surprising to hear because usually when someone's on the losing streak, that's not the moment that you start to believe in yourself, right? So um, I'm wondering, did someone help? You know, your brother Anthony uh, has talked to me about, you know, working with, you know, a coach, um, like a mental coach, a sports, I think it's a sports uh, psychiatrist, if I'm getting that correct. Um, do you do the same thing? Have you had success with that? You know what? Uh I've never done that actually. I feel like mine was more throughout just my journey. I started understanding things uh, myself, you know, started reading books. Um, my, my girlfriend, you know, she really calmed me down and settled me down into a life of uh, 
a professional athlete. You know, I was a little, a little crazy. And I was younger. I liked to party throughout camps and drink and smoke. And, um, and I'm not saying I don't smoke or drink still, but it's like, now I just know when to take it serious. And, um, not only that, I take myself serious. It, it took a while to really, uh, see myself as a, a grown up. You know, I, I felt like I was a younger brother the whole time and felt like a little kid. And then uh, I'm like, yo, time is flying. I'm starting to see some gray hairs in my head. My hairline's starting to recede. And I, I'm like, I got to take advantage of this time and make sure that I'm investing in the things that I want to do and the lifestyle that I want to have. Uh, you said uh, your girlfriend helped you realize this. Correct me if I'm wrong. Fiance now, right? Yes, sir. Fiance. I just got engaged uh, three months ago. So wow. Congrats. Finally, uh, finally made a step. Yes, sir. Thank you. When's the big day? Um, as of right now, we're going to wait it out a little bit. She's got some goals. She wants to uh, get done. She's going to college to get her master's degree. So I'm um, probably going to wait until 2023. So give us a little time to actually plan and uh, figure out what, what day we really want. And how long ago did you guys meet? I met her five years ago. So yeah, we're coming up on year number six this February. So, uh, but I've been knowing her my whole life. I've been knowing her since I was about like 12 or 13 years old. Oh, wow. And then you reconnected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were friends, you know, throughout, throughout it all. And then, uh, yeah, 22 is when we met and really not met, but we uh, started taking, you know, that, that next step and becoming more than friends. I love it. I met my wife Thank when we were 12 you. as well. So that's a good uh, that's a good age to meet you. And we weren't obviously yeah, getting right. back there. So respect, respect. <laughs> um, For sure. You know, the, the, the part about, you know, maybe not believing in yourself is, is, uh, is very interesting to me. Do you think if your older brother, like based on your DNA, based on the kind of person that you are, if your older brother isn't doing what he's doing when you're coming up, do you think you do something completely different? Like the only reason why you went down this path, eventually you come to love it and you come to grow and, 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 and appreciate everything. But like, do you feel like you do a completely different thing in your life? If, if Anthony wasn't doing this first? Honestly, uh, I'm not sure. You know, he made the first transition in MMA and I didn't really know nothing about the sport. I mean, I've watched it on YouTube at the time, you know, watching pride fights and um, watching UFC fights, but never personally would I, was I thinking like, yo, I'm going to be a fighter. Like that's going to be my profession. I always thought I was going to have the normal route, you know, go to college, uh, have a normal life and, you know, figure things out from there. But uh, I went to, I went to sign up for college for the first time and I was like, saw someone I knew was a lot older than me. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to wait, see, uh, see what's happening. And uh, I took the martial arts route instead. Wow, so you never even went to a class? No, sir. I, my last class was uh, senior year, so yeah, it's been a while for me. Wow. <laughs> so so you went that first yeah. day, and then you're like, I'm out? I'm sure you don't regret it. Oh, no, I don't regret it at all. <laughs> you know, I'm glad I pursued this, and yeah, man, this is uh, definitely the lifestyle for me. Okay, and so um, now you're in Bellator. You've had a few fights under your belt. Could you tell me, from your perspective, biggest difference fighting in Bellator as opposed to the UFC? Um, I mean, the shows ran a little bit different. You know, my first experience with Bellator, um, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't used to that at all. You know, UFC has like everything set up for you and they have, uh, you know, they have like things, uh, people to take you to the saunas and stuff like that, where my first fight with Bellator, I had to really figure everything out by myself, you know, it kind of felt like the beginning times again, but, um, you know, second and third fight when COVID started coming around, I feel like things, things got very similar to how the UFC was, you know, it was very organized and everything was really well thought out and taken care of. So I really don't see a, a difference at all, to be honest. I mean, just, uh, I feel like for me, it was just less pressure, you know, like I kind of, not only that, I think a, a time in my life where I'm like really enjoying being myself, you know, throughout my UFC career, I was, uh, I was in conflict in who I was, you know, like I, I, I was still searching on who I was, what I liked and who I am as an individual outside of fighting. And I think I found that once I left the UFC, you know, I had to spend some time and really, uh, mature and figure out who I am and, you know, what I do. And I think uh, now it's just blossoming, you know, like it's uh, all coming together for me. I kind of love the fact that you took this route that you, you, you bet on yourself here because people forget like you, you, your last fight in the UFC was a win. It wasn't like you were, you know, you got released and your old news, this and that. But the fact that your brother never fought for Bellator feels like this is your own path. Like you're not walking in his footsteps. You're not trying to get the belt that he had, you know, different weight class and all. This is a whole new thing that is just exclusive and unique to you. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I personally, I needed it, man. You know, um, my comfort zone was UFC and you don't grow in your comfort zone. You know, I, I left and got uncomfortable for a little bit and I feel like uh, I needed that, you know, like I needed that that rebirth of me, you know, to really push my limits. And not only that, to show, show everybody, you know, that I'm part of a, I'm part of a legacy, man. You know, Sergio Pettis' legacy is going to keep growing and growing. And 
um, this is definitely the route that I think was, you know, better off for me. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, I get to buy a nice necklace and have some money in my account to be able to afford uh, nutrition and afford, uh, you know, recovery and the stuff that I, I want to put my money back into, um, which is mostly my career. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You're doing better now financially than you were in the UFC, yes? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. hundred percent. Okay. That is uh, definitely worth noting as well. Uh, and I understand, according to your coach, Duke Rufus, your younger cousin, who is what, like 14, 15, just had a win in his amateur debut, right? 16, maybe? Yeah, yeah. He's actually uh, 18. He just 18. turned 18 now. Okay. Yeah. 18, but uh, he's been training since he was about 14, 15 years old. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. His name's AJ, AJ Pettis, man. He'll be the next one out of uh, the Pettis family to definitely make some noise for sure. He's a, he's a beast, hard worker, and uh, humble kid. You know, I'm very excited for his future. What weight? Uh, he's a 135 right now. Oh, yep, 135. Uh -oh. Coming for your belt. <laughs> Uh, he might be, man. The kid's a beast. He's uh, he gives me work all the time. You know, I, I work with him, and uh, it's just cool to have a, a almost like a, a little younger brother in a way. You know, that I could uh, feed some knowledge and just uh, help him blossom. And uh, we're, we're we're talking to you, and I feel bad if I'm being honest because the weigh-ins are tomorrow. How tough is the weight cut for you to 135? <laughs> Honestly, the weight cut for 135 is so much easier than flyweight. You know, okay. I, I can keep a smile on my face. I mean, I still got the dehydrated mouth and stuff, and everything that happens with the weight cuts. But uh, yeah, I'm a lot happier individual, man. The, the flyweight weight cuts, they were they were tough on me. Yeah. So like, could you tell us like right now how much to go? Yeah, right now I got 3.6 to go. So oh, it's going to be a uh, breeze. Yeah, easy night of weight. Yeah, easy night of uh, weight cutting. So I mean, for for my flyweight, I'd probably have to cut about like six or five tonight. So I was pretty strict though. It taught me a lot of, a lot of discipline with everything I needed to have for, you know, my, my, pre or my current weight cuts. Uh, the hardcore fans love Horiguchi. Everyone at ATT says he's one of the hardest workers, one of the best guys in their gym, which of course is saying a lot considering the greats who fight out of ATT. Have you been watching him for a while? Are you aware of him? Are you impressed with him? Yeah, man, I've been watching him ever since he got in the UFC. I think his first fight was uh, Dustin Pegg. Um, I was I was young, you know, coming up, and uh, he fought my teammate uh, Chico Camus. So, you know, I was definitely keeping an eye out for him, helping Chico prep for him. And I've watched him throughout his whole career, you know, when he fought Demetrius Johnson, um, the success he's had at other organizations like Risen and Bellator. He's a beast, bro. He is. He's 29 and three for a reason. And um, his style is interesting. He's got like a karate background, MMA style, a little bit shorter than me. Uh, you could see how powerful he is with his punches. And, um, you know, it's he's a full mixed martial artist. You know, he's not just a stand up fighter, too. He could submit to you, he can take you down. So he's definitely a dangerous fighter. You know, it's, it's going to be a big task this Friday. I'm assuming you're thinking, I mean, you're preparing yourself for 25 minutes. This feels like it's tailor-made for a 25-minute battle. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I'm prepped for a 25-minute battle, but uh, whatever happens, happens. I would love to get a, a knockout or submission. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if he wants to go out there and point fight me, I'm going to go out there and point fight him as well and control what I can control. I love the fact that it feels like 135 is in focus this weekend. Like I said, your main event on Friday, UFC's main event on Saturday. I don't know if you're a boxing fan, but two of the best 135ers. Gervonta. Yeah, Gervonta yeah. on Sunday, Devin yeah. Haney on Saturday. Last week, we had Teofimo Lopez and George Cambosis fighting. Like, it just seems like all the 135ers on the planet who are top-tier talent are fighting in the next, you know, few days. So it's very cool. I can't wait for your fight, man. Congrats on all your success. Thank you. Good luck on Friday. Hey, thank you, Ariel. Appreciate you guys having me. All right, we'll talk to you soon. There he is, the current Bellator bantamweight champion, Sergio Pettis.